Later on, you'll be doing a lab called the Beer's Law Lab, where you measure absorbance versus concentration. For right now, we just want to focus on what is the effect of different kinds of light on solutions. So if we look at different wavelengths of light, we can measure the absorbance and see how things are similar and how they're different. So notice in the red end of the spectrum, very little light is absorbed because the solution itself is red. If we go to the other end of the spectrum, to the purple end, very little is also absorbed. By changing the wavelength of light, and thus the frequency and energy of light, we can get different absorbances. For a given solution, you need to find the wavelength of maximum absorbance. Here in the FET simulator, the preset is 549 for a red solution. However, if you were to go to a blue solution, the preset is 780. So let's go back to the 549 that we used on the red solution and see what it is like. The absorbance is very low. So what works for one solution will not work for the other. Here you have a Vernier LabQuest and two different types of colorimeters. Both of them have a space to put a cuvette in. They both have four different wavelengths that they read at, a calibration button, and two selection buttons. To connect them, plug the cables in the side, and the machine automatically recognizes what you've plugged in. In order to get this to work, you're gonna to have to calibrate it which means that you're going to have to stick a cuvette with nothing but water in. So calibration is to say, the only thing we're going to change is what's in the water. So every cuvette has a clear side and also has a ridge side. You want the clear side to be the side that the light travels through. So there's the arrow and you can see that's the direction of travel. The arrow on this one is from left to right. And so you would want to put the cuvette in in such a way that light goes right through there. So you close the lid, push the calibrate button on the device, and it will reset itself to zero. The other device works very similarly. You put it in the direction that the light will go. Be sure to close the door push the calibration button and it will reset itself to zero as well. Now you're ready to test a solution. So I've put a green solution in the cuvette. Again, you make sure that you align the clear side with the beam of light. You need to wipe it off. So grab a very soft, piece of tissue paper or something like that, clean off the cuvette because you don't want smudges and droplets on the outside. Close it and you don't have to do anything. You only have to read the reading. We'll also put one in the other one. I want you to notice that the two cuvettes are reading at two different wavelengths. To change the wavelength, you just push the button to select a different wavelength You'll have to recalibrate it before you can use it. So again, you would pop the water in and push cal, and then you could take the new reading at the new wavelength. So here's a red solution. I'm gonna pour it in the cuvette. Make sure that it's aligned in the correct way. Wipe it off. Then align it in the correct way close the lid and take a reading at this new wavelength. There's another device that you can use. This one is called a spectrophotometer. This is different from a colorimeter in that it measures all the different wavelengths at one time. Once you plug it in, it'll automatically recognize what it's connected to. You push sensor, calibrate, and then UV spectrophotometer
it'll take a reading of just in the dark, so nothing in it. And then you have to wait for 90 seconds while it warms up. After it's warmed up, you take your cuvette full of water, wipe it down. The air will tell you what direction it goes in. Pop it in. And you will hit finish calibration. And again, calibration just tells you this is what water looks like. So when you put in a different solution, it's not picking up on the plastic or the water. It's just picking up on the chemical that's in the water. Here's a red solution. I'm going to pour the red solution in the cuvette. I'm going to wipe it down and place it in. This one is different. You're going to have to put in the solution and then push the go button. Down at the bottom left or over here, you push that button and it's going to record all the different wavelengths at one time. As soon as the graph appears, then you can push the button again. and it will stop collecting data and you can see the data. You'll notice that it has a wavelength of maximum absorption. It has a readout of wavelength and absorbance. So by clicking around the screen, you can actually select different wavelengths and see what the absorbance is. If you want to do a different solution, you fill a cuvette, you wipe it down, you pop it in. There's no need to calibrate it. It only gets calibrated once. You push go. You can either store or discard the data. I choose to discard it. As soon as a graph is generated, you can push go again and that stops it. Then you can look at the absorption spectrum of that sample on the graph. The last thing I wanted to do was go ahead and show you some of the data that's generated. The data table in front of you is from the colorimeters. You're limited to four individual wavelengths However, you can see that there's a great difference between absorbance based on the different colors of the solutions. So if the colorimeter is all that you have, the kids can still decide which wavelength would be the best one to measure the absorbance at. Later on, you'll be doing a lab called Beer's Law Lab, where there will be different solutions of different concentrations and you will look at the different absorbances at each one of those concentrations and find that there's a relationship there. For now, this is just out of all the wavelengths of light, what's the best one to look at? The schools with an AP chemistry program will also be getting a spectra V's spectrophotometer. This is the data that's measured by looking at one of those colored solutions you can tell that there is a great wavelength of maximum absorption there at 624.6 nanometers. So if you wanted to look at this particular one, then you would go, oh, okay, I need to look at this specific wavelength, not any of those low wavelengths. This is another example of data collected. This is absorbing in the green part of the spectrum at 523 nanometers indicating that this solution can't be green because remember green is either reflected or transmitted not absorbed in a green solution the kids should be able to look at data like this and find the wavelength of max absorbance and of course that ties back to the idea that any color of light has a given wavelength a given frequency and a given energy associated with it here's a sample of a mixture of different colors Leaves are made up of chlorophyll and carotenoids. And by combining all those pigments, it can harvest different parts of the light spectrum. So if you took a green solution, which is a mixture of blue and yellow, or a purple solution, which is a mixture of red and blue, then you ought to be able to find multiple wavelengths of maximum absorption. So play with this with your kids, get them to do a blue solution and a red solution a purple solution and see if they can figure out and make the connection behind why are there multiple peaks.